Hi, I'm Pete the Gadget Guy and in this video I'm going to take you on a quick tour of the features and functions found on a typical digital SLR camera. Now this is a two-part tour so when you finish this clip go to the second part. Buying your very first digital SLR is a very big step. Apart from the financial investment you'll need to also invest some time plus demonstrate a commitment to the craft of photography. In return, it's a tremendously rewarding hobby. When you do become a committed photographer, you won't regret it. A digital SLR will open creative doors, as well as guaranteeing better image quality in the photos you take. So let's start at looking at the different controls on a typical digital SLR. Now you might find that your camera has buttons in different places to the one I'm using, but generally the controls across the range of cameras are very similar. So let's begin with the front. There isn't much here except for the lens release button, the manual flash button on those cameras that have a built-in flash, and the trigger. Actually, this is the most important button on the camera. It's the one that takes the photo. All digital cameras have a two-stage trigger. Half to press it and it activates the camera's functions such as focus, exposure, white balance assessment and any of the other functions you've engaged. Depress it all the way and the shutter is engaged, snapping your photo. The only dial here is called the control wheel or in some cases the jog wheel. This control is usually placed near the shutter button or on the back of the camera so it can be operated easily by the index finger or thumb of the right hand. Some digital SLRs have two control wheels. For example, a single control wheel can change both shutter speed and aperture settings on some cameras, while on dual wheel cameras these functions can be split. Depending on the selected mode, the control wheel can change filters, flip between various white balance settings and adjust other camera parameters. I guess I should also mention the hand grip. The hand grip gives you something solid to hold and helps position your fingers over the shutter release and other controls on the right side of the camera. As digital cameras grow in sophistication, the size of the hand grip grows proportionately. Okay, that was easy. Let's look at the top of the camera. There's much more action here. In the middle is what is known as the hot shoe. This is where you can add an external flash or other equipment. It's called hot because it can communicate with the device inserted in it to accept or feed picture taking data between the camera and the device or vice versa. Also located here is the camera's flip up electronic flash. The electronic flash on digital SLRs flips up so it's as far from the lens as possible. This reduces the red eye effects which are more noticeable when the lens and flash are located close together. You can also disable the flash using your camera's controls. Built-in flashes are adequate but for best results consider matching one of the manufacturer's dedicated external flash units with your camera. Depending on your camera, the critically important mode dial will either be on the left or right side of the camera. It's important to understand what the various modes and their hieroglyphs mean. If you're just starting with your digital SLR, we recommend using the camera's auto modes. This will allow you to become comfortable with the myriad other functions before venturing into the creative world of manual control. You should also set the camera's lens to autofocus. Generally there are two auto modes for shooting on a digital SLR, full auto and then program mode. Full auto is usually denoted with a green symbol. When engaged the camera makes all the decisions for you. All you need to do is point and shoot. Program mode allows you more control. It lets the camera make some decisions for you but also puts three things in your control the flash, the ISO value and the white balance. Aperture setting and shutter speed are the two key factors that affect how much light is allowed to hit the camera's sensor, but I'll talk about these in detail a little later on. 
In program mode, the camera is still choosing these settings for you, but sometimes shutter and aperture settings alone are not enough to pull off the photo you're looking for. By raising the ISO value, you make your camera more sensitive to light, thus requiring less of it to make the correct exposure. There are other auto settings on the mode dial and these deliver specific creative functionality. Different cameras offer different creative modes, but generally these six are the most common. Portrait. This sets the image color for skin tones perfectly, as well as the f-stop to ensure a limited depth of field. Landscape. Great for taking photos of landscapes such as beach or mountain scenes. Setting the f-stop for maximum depth of field and optimizing the greens and blues typically found in a landscape. Macro or close-up, this is for photographing small objects so they fill the whole frame. Sports, this should be used when you want to photograph a fast-moving object. It adjusts shutter speed to reduce or eliminate blur. Night portrait, a mode that sets the camera's exposure to work effectively in most night scenes. Flash off, useful for times when your situation limits the use of a flash, such as in a museum. The other settings are the important manual settings. AV on Canon and A on Nikon DSLRs refers to aperture priority. The aperture is measured in f-stops, which determines how much light the lens allows onto the sensor. When aperture priority is set, the camera automatically adjusts other exposure settings, such as shutter speed, relative to the f-stop you've chosen. The f-stop selected will be shown on the LCD control panel on the top side of the camera. Aperture priority mode is ideal when you want direct control over the depth of field of your photographs. The TV setting does the reverse. TV stands for time value and allows you to manually adjust the shutter speed so that the camera automatically adjusts the aperture and other settings relative to the selected shutter speed. Shutter speed refers to the amount of time the camera's shutter remains open. Time value mode is ideal for capturing fast action subjects or adding blur effects. M stands for full manual mode. Manual mode allows you to set both the aperture and shutter speed separately. This allows for the ultimate in photographic creativity and delivers full control over exposure. Each DSLR brand will have other icons on their mode dials. For example, the Canon 450D also has an ADEP mode, which stands for Automatic Depth of Field. In ADEP, the camera sets the depth of field automatically. When the camera is set on ADEP, you don't need to set an aperture f-stop as the camera does all this for you. You may also find other icons such as custom modes shown by C1, C2 and C3 settings. These allow you to develop customised camera settings and access them quickly. On the other side, you'll find a series of buttons and an LCD control panel. Some DSLRs, mainly the high-end ones, still use a top mount monochrome display where the most important camera settings such as aperture, shutter speed, ISO, shots remaining, battery life and exposure compensation can be assessed at a glance. Other cameras do not have such a control panel and completely rely on the rear LCD monitor to display this data. If there are buttons next to the LCD control panel, they control a number of the camera's most used functions. These buttons may control such things as the metering and white balance, the AF mode and drive mode, plus the ISO and exposure compensation. These double up because of the dual control. The first function is accessed with the control wheel next to the shutter and the second function with the scroll wheel on the back of the camera's body. That brings us to the end of part one of the camera body tour. In part two, I'll take you through some of the treasures on the back of your camera.